Um, I suppose at the end of the day, this this is the um, this is almost the core of of what this is all about. Um, we had a, our first two-day planning session the other day for our new regional tourism organisation on the coast. And we had Tourism Taz coming up to talk to us after lunch about marketing. So we had the whole morning session to talk about everything else other than marketing. And I don't do my block very often, but twice during that morning session I did my block saying, we're not here to talk about marketing, we're here to talk about everything else because everyone's focus always comes to marketing. Um, and so quite often we find that this question is incredibly well answered at the expense of the others. So put it into, into perspective, make sure that it fits within. That's because it's written by the marketers. That's right. Well, that's probably part of it as well. Um, from a marketing perspective, we want to know who your target markets are, how you get to them and what the results are. We want to know how you've identified your target markets um, and how you've identified them. Yeah, you can say, I've identified my target markets by using the target markets as presented by Tourism Tasmania at the Destination Southern Tasmania workshop. Now, be really sure, be really confident that just because the State Tourism Authority said that's the target markets for the state, be really sure that they are yours, because they may not be. Or you may be able to bring that down far more to say that, yeah, while well, Tourism Tasmania are targeting this particular market sector and you identify and recognise and support their position, that you as an individual, individual business have actually identified your own set of target markets. And if you do that, if you're prepared to do that, you need to clarify how you've done it and justify why you've done it. So if suddenly your, your target market is this small niche market sector, when, how did you actually determine that that was your target market? Don't just say, oh, we decided that mum, dad and the six kids over there in the Tarago, they're our target market. Well, how do you know that mum and dad and the six kids in the Tarago are? Have you got the product that they want? Um, yeah, I, 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 I think we... I th as I said, it's always well answered, but you need to be really clear as to who you, who you are targeting and how you're targeting them. You need to be able to convince us that those markets that you've identified are in fact correct. And don't just talk about that the, the common mistake, it is generally really well answered, the only kind of common theme that I often see with the judges' feedback is, is this your target market or is this who's actually coming to your business? <laughs> There's a difference. Don't, don't just track who your visitors are and say, this is my target market. They may be accidentals. They're not people you're specifically targeting. So that, that's, a, that's something to mm. be aware of. And, and whilst we talk about research and we talk about um, how did you define them, don't just brush that aside. Make sure that you, you clearly articulate how you've defined them, how you've found it out, how you've worked it out. Um, and you're right, like, again, you go to certain properties, they're going to say that we do a postcode check of everyone that comes to our business, so we know who our target market is. No, you don't. You know who's coming to your business. Um, so it's not worth mentioning that at all? It's part of your process, it's but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be the only part. It, shouldn't, it should be much more than just a single component that determines who your target market is. Um, so it's, I think it's, it comes back to clearly articulating what your product is and who the people are that want it. Um, then how do you get to them? Um, and I think within most businesses, there's more than one target market. There's a, a diversity of, of target markets. Clearly articulate who they are. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the stuff we talk about here, the, the geographics and the psychographics, they're all important. Um, but not necessarily for everyone answering the question. No. You don't, for some people, it's not. Some businesses, it's not about where they're coming from. That doesn't factor in at all as to who's your target market are. It's more about behavioural. It's more about how these people see themselves and uh, where that's where their driver is for their desire for your product. Um, it may not have anything to do with where they're located geographically. 
But at the end or of the how old they are, or whether they're male or female. At the end of the day, if you don't clearly articulate it in, in, in um, part A of this question, then you are going to really struggle for the remainder of the question. Because we then want to talk about... Um, we want to go past that. We want to talk about the marketing strategies that are specific to each target market. So if you've left us confused on, on part A, or you haven't clearly articulated on part A who your target markets are, or there is some, confu some doubt as to whether you have then you get to part B and we start to get confused. Now, I, I can say in total honesty, I have seen people say, in part A, these are my target markets, A, B, C and D, and then they get to, ta to part B and they talk about how they target their target markets and their target markets are completely different in part A and part B to what they were in part A. And you start to think, hold on, what's going on? Now, they've changed the, the way they've presented their marketing campaign. They've gone... They've, they've, They've read the question. They've got it. They're good business operators. They've got a marketing plan. They've done all that. But then we've come along and said, "Who's your target market?" And we said, "Oh, hold on. We better just answer that question, and then we'll answer the next one. Make sure that they flow from one to the other." Um, and then again, tell us about how you get to those target markets, and be very specific. Charts again, tables. Great opportunity. This is target market A. These are the strategies we've used to get to target market A, and these are the outcomes. We again want to know what the outcomes are. If it didn't work, we're reassessing our target markets. So it's just investing X numbers of dollars and attracting this particular target market. It hasn't worked. Um, we have misread our market, we have misread our product, whatever. We are now reviewing our target markets, and we've identified something else. A judge will look at that and say, wow, that's, that's, that's really good stuff. <laughs> that's, that's reinforcing that it doesn't always have to work. As much as we would love it to work every time and we would love every... There must be someone in the room that every cent they've spent on marketing they've had a return on, I'm sure. Uh, so yes, clearly articulate who they are and tell us exactly what you're doing to get to them. And exactly is really important and then tell us about whether it works. We want to know. We want to know so we can sell that research to somebody else. That's not right, I guess. That's this sort of stuff. Um, fairly um, basic target markets, but some people will run with that. Um, the strategies and the outcomes. It doesn't matter if that's a big or it didn't work. Be honest with us. Um, but again, tables... We're almost suggesting that our judges are lazy. They're not. They want to be able to read something that is easy, quickly, understand it, get an outcome, get a response, understand. Yep, I've read that and I know. Um, that could be presented. I could write that in, in a page and a half and you'd have no idea what I was saying. So. Use those charts. Um, this is really interesting as well. Uh, I think being every business has its own distinct differences and it comes back to that, that one C we talked about before. What are those things that make you special? What are those things that set you apart? Um, you've got a couple of tour operators and we've both got buses and we've both got staff and we've both take you up the top of Mount Wellington. What's the difference? What's that point of difference that sets them apart? Someone might say, oh, it's dollars. Well, I don't know whether it's dollars. I think the point of difference has to be, what is it that makes your product so special that it resonates with your target market? And they go, yep, there's two options. Classic example for us would be, um, and one entered last year, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether they did enter it or not. From our region, we've got Gordon River Cruises and World Heritage Cruises, both running out of Strawn. Customers arrive in Strawn, they've got a red boat and a white boat. Great colours, Sydney Swans colours. They're on top, by the way, if anyone's not sure. Um, they've got a red boat and a white boat. How do they choose between a red boat and a white boat? There's got to be that point of difference, and therefore both... Pure Tasmania and World Heritage Cruises have to find a way in the message that they deliver to their target markets, what sets them apart? 
What makes that point of difference? Is it the quality of the food? Is it the quality of the experience? Is it the feeding the, the fish? Is it the, the Sarah Island? Is it What is it that sets you apart? Um, find it. Find it and tell us about it. Um, I reckon this is part of the part of the, the education process for a lot of our tourism operators who get to this part of the question and say, I run a B&B &B, and there are 15 B&Bs in our town and mine just happens to be the most recently one painted. There's got to be more. There's got to be things that people can use this question to start exploring them, their own businesses. Have a look at what makes you different. Have a look at why your people are coming to the door. Ask some of them. Ask some of the people, why did you choose us instead of those other 14 B&Bs? Because of, shit, we hadn't even thought of that. Huh? The colour of the windows, the, I don't know. Find it and tell us about it. And tell us again with that incredible passion so that we know about it. Um, I reckon there are a lot of businesses that enter, that, that write this one out, and at the end of the reading this question, this, this particular section of this question, it's sort of, oh, hum. give me more, give me more. There's, again, it's almost that bucket list thing. Give me something here that makes me want to come and stay or enjoy or eat at your place or do whatever and give it to me in that question. Um, so again, it comes back to make sure you tell us clearly who your target markets are. Make sure you tell us how you're getting to your target markets, what you're telling your target markets and then how you are telling them about your distinctive difference. If your distinctive difference is that your building is yellow, how are you telling your market that your business is yellow? If you're putting a coloured picture in a magazine and they can see it's yellow. Whatever, but make sure you tell us. It's again, how do you attract each target market? Another table wouldn't hurt. If you want to chuck another table in, you can have 30 pages of tables. By the way, the Cradle Coast Authority, with whom I work, we entered a category last year we got penalised. Shows I didn't have anything to do with it, but we did get penalised for having too many pages of graphs. I think she couldn't be corrupted at all. I'm Switzerland. <laughs> oh, get the bucket. Um, yeah, I... I have a... I have a um, it's a personal thing. I think every judge has a personal issue. I have a personal issue when you start to, in your submission, name your competitors. And a few people do. They say, yes, our point of difference is this because this one, this one, this one, and this one, this one, do it that way and we do it that way. Or this one charges this amount and we charge less. Or this one's X kilometres from town and we're at further distance. I don't actually want to know about your competitors. I want to know you've got them and that you're better than them, but I don't actually want to know. Them. That's only a personal thing. I just It gripes me when I read a submission and say, these are my five oppos opposition. <laughs> Who cares? Um, and I, you don't have to name your Well, I can't see any value in it. Um, I, think, I think the judges want to know that you've done a competitor analysis, that you know who they are, that you know what your differences are, because if you haven't looked at your competitors, from a serious strategic standpoint, then you're really missing some key elements of, of your business plan there um, and of your marketing plan. Mm. But you, you know, you've only got so much space to sell your business. So I don't think the judges want to see you go on and on no. about it. I, they definitely do not want to see you naming them and then saying how much better you are than them mm. or going into any detail about them. So I think it's a case of finding a balance between assuring the judges that you've done a competitor analysis, you know, um, you know you know, the business in which you operate and you know what your competitors are doing and you're keeping an eye on that. Um, but, yeah, they probably don't want you to devote pages and pages to this business does this, this and this. Their price structure is this. They offer this many rooms um, with these facilities. I don't think they need that much detail. I read one that said that it was fairly common business, as in there's lots of them, but it identified one of its competitors, and it, this was a business, again, I, know, I can pick on ours because it's from my region, this was a business from my region who said one of its competitors was a similar business in Hobart. Now, I sat there and looked at it and thought, what crap is that? How does that work? Uh, now, if that person hadn't named them, 
that wouldn't have been an issue, but you look at it and think, well, you don't really fully understand. So don't, don't denigrate other businesses in any aspect of your submission. Don't denigrate other competitors or businesses because it doesn't do you any good at all. Um, they're your, they are, in fact, part of your industry. We've touched on that one. Um, I think that the, the different types of promotions, even if it is for your distinctive difference, don't. That, that's going to be covered in your whole of this answer. It talks about how you market, what are the tools you use. Um, make sure you include them all. Make sure that you're in part of every marketing strategy or campaign that you're a part of. And if you're if, if you're involved in those campaigns in a in a third person capacity, put that in there. If it's if it's Tourism Tasmania and, and the regional organisation, and you're buying in, put in there that you're you're a cooperative, you're involved in a cooperative campaign which is reaching your target markets. Don't leave it to our imagination. This this somehow seems really simple. Is demonstrate how potential visitors are provided with an accurate depiction of your business. Yep, you make sure that the information that is put out is, is accurate. So you check your brochures and you check your websites and you change it for the seasons and you do all that sort of stuff. There are lots of people out there who promote your business. If we went online today and, and looked for a particular business, we would find it probably referenced 500 times and you're only in control of two of those. How do you make sure that those other 498 are representing your business the way you want it. How do you actually know what someone else is saying on your business? What are you doing about the feedback that you're getting on TripAdvisor? Because that is now a form of communication that we're all going to. We're all going to TripAdvisor to find out, should we stay at, with Kelly at the wool store or should we go somewhere else? And TripAdvisor is giving us really positive stuff, so we go. What happens if TripAdvisor is giving us, don't go there because it's crap? Um, what are you doing about that to make sure that that that's been, that, that message is, is the correct message that you want out there. So make sure that you are monitoring and in control of the messages that have been delivered about your business and tell us how you do it. And then make sure that what you're saying to your customer is exactly is actually what your customer is getting. Not what you're giving them, not what you're delivering to them, but what they're getting. So are you asking your customers we said that we would do this, this and this. Did you get this, this and this? And they might say, look, yeah, we got the first two, but that third one just didn't eventuate. It's not happening. It's not working. So actually the message you're putting out is not matching the service that you're delivering, and therefore your customers are not happy. Make sure that you are delivering on your promise. So it's just, it's just that, that um, personal assessment, review of your own business, the messages you are putting out, the messages others are putting out on your behalf and the product and experience that your visitors are receiving. 